You are now listening to the sounds of the Crates and Microphones. All right, so we got all the kinks figured out. Now we're going to start this thing off. So joining us right now, another Milk Crates and Microphones exclusive interview with a uh, with hip-hop head that's been in the game for a long time. He is a producer from the Great White North, like we talked about earlier, from Canada. Joining us tonight on this Friday night it is our boy, Factor. How you doing, bro? What's up? Cheers, boys. Hey, cheers. Thanks for having us out, man. Or thanks for coming out, and thanks for uh, and, and spending your Friday night thanks talking talking to me. us. Yeah, of course. Out, out of Saskatoon, of all cities. Sounds like it's cold. The, the hometown of the yeah, legendary man. wrestler, Rowdy Rowdy Piper. Kilts out. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Kilts, kilts are out. That's his nephew, huh? So are the bagpipes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's freezing cold. It's freezing cold. It's it's uh, snow. It's right in the middle of winter right now. It's minus 25 or something minus right now. 25. Man, did you guys get hit with that uh, with that north northern storm that kind of hit the northern sides of uh, the U.S.? I mean, I guess you guys are getting hit with storms all the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a couple days ago there was a storm. I mean... The weird thing is, is I just got back from L.A. I was out in L.A. for a couple of weeks Ooh. recording, doing some stuff with Chesky. So nice. I got to I got to feel the sun, you know, after a couple of years and no traveling. It, it was nice to get it was nice to get away. I got to admit. Yeah. And that's our cold, huh? You're out here in our cold. Yeah. You came out here and fools are like, <laughs> no, it's I know. cold it, as fuck. It, it, you know, it's kind of cold in the evening, but the day is beautiful. Yeah, I yeah. believe it. You got guys out there in sweatshirts still, and you're out there chilling in a t-shirt, huh? <laughs> Kicking back. <laughs> that tough skin. Yeah, well, it, it was it, it was great though. Got to do a lot of got, got to do a lot of fun stuff while I was there. Yeah, awesome. well, and we're glad that you were able to um, be able to travel. So, what what has that been like these last few years with the COVID restrictions? I know um, restrictions on getting over the border have been tough, especially Canada to U.S. or U.S. to Canada. Tell us a little bit about that struggle, and um, <clears throat> has it been kind of nice to kind of get a break because you've been going. I mean, you rubber hitting the pavement for a long time, putting in a lot of work. Your prof- if you guys don't know, go check out his uh, portfolio on on Wikipedia. I mean, this guy has done so much work in the past fifteen years, yeah, twenty just, years. Just Google Factor Chandelier. Just You'll definitely see pages it. on pages. The pages scrolling and pages of scrolling. So, so I guess my question is: Has the COVID has it been nice to kind of take a little break, or have you been biting at the nail to get back out there? And have you been working a lot while you've been there? You know it. It's been a little of both. Um, I had a son. He's three and a half now. Congratulations. Congrats. So thank you very much. And, and it's great. It's, you know, I love being a dad. I love uh, that whole side of my life. Um, my wife went on mat leave. I basically went on tour with Chesky for two months across America, the Sad Fat Luck Tour. So I dope. came back. She was going back to work. I was going to be daddy daycare and we were just going to figure things out um, until the next tour. And then basically COVID hit and it made it our decision for us. So I was daddy daycare. I was um, just at home with him. We have our grandparents here. So I was still making beats, still doing things. And yeah, you know, one year turned into two years, turned into two and a half years, turned into like... Uh I don't know. I and, and then and then people are still saying, you know, uh, you, there's travel restrictions. Chesky had these opportunities for me. I was like, had to cancel my my tour for first storm in America, in Europe, in Canada. Like I was bummed out. So I was like, you know, this is this is uh, mandatory that I go to the states and do this. So I was able to go, but you have to spend. You got to buy your flight. You spend an extra 50 bucks to get this test. You do the test with someone <coughs> on Zoom. They watch you put the thing in your nose. Jesus. You um, do the test. They see it. You fly in. This isn't even close to the worst part. So then I fly in. I'm out doing doing studio sessions, all this stuff. Shot a video. Um, was going to shoot multiple more videos, but actually, you know, COVID – hit with some of the close homies and I wasn't even able to do all the work that I did, but it turned into other work. And, uh, that goddamn so then Omicron. I'm trying to go back. I re- I get up in the morning. I have my test to get back to Canada, which isn't the $50 test. It's a $250 test. Wow. So then I do it. I do it with the girl hung over in the morning after a studio session. She's zooming me. 
I push it in and I push the test in too hard, it says the specimen is invalid. Oh. And I'm like, oh my God. You know, because if if I was to get COVID, I would have to stay another two weeks. Mm. Obviously, that would be an issue for like a lot of reasons. You know, I'd love to be in LA for two more weeks, but on my own terms. And uh, so then I had to go basically to this place in Melrose that was uh, doing these boutique 24 hour PCR tests. Weird. Mm. Another 250 bucks. Gee, it's so then I get it, shows up negative. Jeez. I get to the airport. Then they hit me with the random test. Mm. So then I got to get another test in my nose to get on the plane. I get off the plane. I do my transfer. I get to Calgary, and they hit me with another random wow. test. Like, I got five like, nose swabs in a day. What are these oh, random? Yeah, yeah what, what are, are these random tests? Yes, I've never heard of these random tests. You look suspicious, bro. I don't know. You look suspicious because it's, it's you can take it seventy-two hours before you get on the flight. So then I guess they can randomly test you, like if you get it. So I took it right before I did the show at Daddy Kev's new night um, in right. LA. This the scenario 808. Uh -huh. So I did it right before that, just in case, you know, it was like a busy night. I had the mask on. I was making sure that I was like, whatever. Yeah. Be yeah. safe. Whatever. And, uh, yeah. So I don't know. I was kind of nervous the whole time. It, it, it kind of, uh, kind of harsh my mellow at the very end, but the, the show was great. I got over fine, you know, um, I think it's just a lot of, it's just a lot of, it's a pain in the ass, but, I think they're going to cut those travel restrictions right away and we're going to be able to go back and forth a lot easier now. So I'm looking forward to traveling more. I'm looking forward to, um, you know, more opportunities. I really miss my homies. It really made me realize how many I friends I have that aren't in Saskatoon. You know, Saskatoon's yeah. a small city. Yeah. Like my G's are, at, you know, seeing Chesky, seeing like AWOL, Micah, like, you know, it's coming up on 20 years I've been friends with these guys. So, time. you know, you, you end up missing your friends. The, the, this has been a long time. It's been kind of shitty. <laughs> but on the flip side, I've been able to spend a lot of time with my son, you know. Blessing so, in disguise for sure. Yeah, which is always a plus. And, on the, and these years you can never get back. And I know everyone says all that. And, you know, I really I really have, like, zeroed in on, on try, trying to do be there, you know, be be present do my best definitely so as, and as a couple of fathers here i'm a father of a five-year-old and a two-year-old and oh. i'll tell you those early years you're right i mean they are super important they go fast and it, it makes and it, they, exactly they go fast you just don't realize it everyone says that it's so cliche but it doesn't really click until you're in the middle i guess that's a that's just human nature right it doesn't really click for you until you you, you yeah. you're in the middle of it it's the truth though it goes by like this so and, and and i, I think it's true. You got to tell people that too. So you keep reminding them. It's like, it's like damn fool. You know, tonight might not be the night for that. You know, you might have to take tonight off and spend it with your son because like in a little while he's going to have his own homies. You know, I can already tell he's three yeah. and a half. He's like, yeah, I want to see my friends. At five, he's booting you already. At <laughs> five, I don't want to kick it done. anymore. Cool exactly. no more, Dad. Right now you're the, you're the hero. You're the yeah. figure he wants to kick it with the most. And then at some point that's going to, you know, that's going to flip. It'll flip for all of us. Yeah. So my daughter's going to be 10 and I'm not cool no more. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Oh yeah. She's. So you guys, you know, you guys, I need, I need that advice. Yeah. You know, like no. you're a little deeper in it. There's really no good advice you can give except, I mean, you just learn as you go. Cause we're all, I think that's the one thing that I took from being a father is just learning on the job. You know what I mean? It's, it's on the, the job learning and rolling with, with the punches. Exactly. I mean, I guess that's kind of like producing as well. How did you get into producing beats and um, musically learn how to put together a beat? Because um listening to your music it is really musically backed like you you are musically inclined did you play instruments was that something that got you into it or did you just pick up a, a drum machine and start beating away so you know i never like this is one thing that i regret i want to get my son into like playing piano uh, -huh. uh learning some of the uh, the basics i feel like i always had a decent ear for music and for melodies but uh, I started DJing. Mm. So, but I always liked, you know, it was West Coast Underground that got me into these things. And, you know, like, excuse me, Maybe. fellowship, all these things. Um, it, you know, they, they kind of like, 
so you start DJing, you start getting vinyl, you start checking out the record store, you start buying the things, and then you start seeing people flipping different styles of music, and then you start hearing jazz, you start seeing what jazz does, and then you, you know, and then I started checking out different records, and then I was like more like a collage artist, really. Mm. Like early in my career was like major samples, major drum breaks. Um, I loved it. You know, I just love the stuff. I love making mixtapes. And then I realized, well, okay. So I, I started making mixtapes. I opened a small record store in Saskatoon huh. and that instantly made me realize I wasn't a businessman. That wasn't for me. Wait, one second, one second. How, how old were you when you opened this record store? I did it. In, I, I went to college for about, or university. Mm -hmm. I went to university, the U of S, University of Saskatchewan for one year. And then I decided it was like my parents had a, a fund for me. And I was like, I'm going to take the fund and open a store. I don't want to do this. This isn't it. And then as soon as I opened the store, I realized I didn't want to do the <laughs> store. I want to do music. Yeah. And so I, I was DJing heavy at the time. And then I realized I wasn't the greatest DJ, but I could put together these like mixtapes and these ideas and like layer samples with pause tapes, shit like that. And then... I got a four track and it was over once I realized you could like do all this stuff. And then it was, I was just, uh, digging in the crates. I was in the crates at this local record store. I was friends with the dude shout out Stu at vinyl diner. He let me sit up there in the back. He was my homie and I just played records. I just looked for the breaks. I would just do it, do it. And then I'd get my stack here, my stack there. And I just kept going through them and going through them eventually things started going a little better i got people local people to rap on them a uh, promoter brought a wall and two max and circus to town oh shit shapeshifters they brought like he was bringing all these these acts in and bringing them to saskatoon there was there was like a random huge underground all underground rap but like west coast mainly um this story could go on forever. I don't want to take it too long, but uh, all the time in the world, all the time in the world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he took us on tour. I ended up kind of like, you know, becoming friends with a wall. Cause he's like the coolest guy ever. And uh, we did a seven inch single called try. And then from that single cornerstone RAS asked us to do a record together. And then that's how I started going out to LA. And that's how I met everyone is everything is through a wall and everything is through him coming to Saskatoon to rock that show and us doing that one song together. Wow. That's, that's awesome. dope. That's like, I still have the original dat tape that he wow. mailed me from LA and I made the beat on like this, you know, looped up. Uh. I don't know. That's... Uh, it, it, it worked out, though. How did you figure that out? Being, that being said, though, um, not to cut you off, but uh, I was doing all these samples, all this stuff, and then I got the opportunity to do a song in, like, a major movie. Someone from L.A. hit oh, me shit. up. But everything that I had was just samples and loops, and the movie wanted to, like, it was the big payday, and... Uh, I missed it. I missed out on it because it was all samples and I couldn't clear them. I was young. Uh, I didn't have a lawyer. I didn't know what was going on. Uh, so man. then I was like, screw that completely. I, uh, you know, I tried to like learn some chords. I tried to learn some keyboards. I started going a little more electronic. There was like, you can kind of see in my career, there's like this sample musical. And then there's like a little blip that maybe is like, <laughs> Uh, learning curve on that stuff and <laughs> yeah. now i feel like it's kind of come into its own where where i could kind of make things that sound like samples but they're not you know still like have the sound that, that i always wanted to that kind of factor that's, sound. that's the that's the goal too right there like you said to make something that sounds like a sample but it's not you made it and it's it's sample worthy it's something that somebody yeah, else is going to sure. want to sample for sure in the future totally and that's the goal right there right so that's kind of where I'm at. So um, basically, I don't know what year, but at least for the last five, shit, maybe like, I don't want to say 10 years, but 
quite a while now there hasn't no samples it's not that i'm against samples i just i'm, I'm you don't I'm need not to really i'm sa and i'm sampling my own stuff i'm sampling my son i'm sampling like people <clears throat> at the fire i'm sampling chesky play guitar yeah, that's tight. you know i'm doing like like sessions at home trying to like get them to sound you know like maybe get a whole band in my backyard and i just record them on one mic and then chop that up you know yeah. just just trying to be creative how did yeah. you how did you hone your sound in like well, where did you get the your you know your influence to like keep it like you're you to know it was you you know what i mean like if you were to hear that I'd be like yeah i fucking made that like where did, where was that like, you know what were you searching for that you finally figured that out you know to just run with I it think, i think i always liked things were a little more melodic i was always the guy who liked the like piano jam mm. the heartfelt jam mm. the kind of like anthemic I love that shit. Live. So that's kind of, you know, that's kind of where I was at. So I always tried to find those samples. I always tried to do that. Um, like those simple things that aren't actually that simple, you know, things that are nice to the ear that can loop for five minutes and you're not going to try to skip it. You know, <laughs> like mm. I was really big on all those, like, um, you know, like, like I said, early living legends, early fellowship, all that stuff, I was able to somehow get out here. There was there was a guy in Victoria who somehow like had a distribution that sold them to these guys in Saskatoon and they would sell them out of their apartment to the local DJs who were just coming up. So we would be getting, you know, I have all these like, high life movement like you know inner city griots i have like all those old west coast a team you know um uh the early sh like planet of the shapes like all these old crazy things and i got them being in the middle of nowhere like literally the middle of canada so you know i i do feel like there is this weird magnetism of underground rap here so i don't know i take that for what it is and i'm still running with it you know yeah meant to be that's awesome so what was it like because you you've talked you've said a few times how the early west coast hip-hop uh kind of helped you get into this music and um shape who you are and you've taught you said freestyle fellowship what was it like to work with someone like micah nine who i mean who is regarded in um and underground hip hop lore as one of the greatest of all times. What was what was it like? Yes, now the greatest of all time. Yeah, yes. And I've and what's crazy is I tell people this a lot, you know, uh a lot of people I've asked a lot of rappers and they say their favorite rapper is Micah Nine. You know, it's it's that whole favorite rapper's favorite rapper thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he, it's, he's a rapper's it's, rapper for sure. Exactly. So what was it like getting to actually work with someone that that's your idol and uh and build a relationship and a bond with them? Um what what was that like? It, it it was uh, so the story it kind of happened it, it was in conjunction with meeting chesky so i did uh my first album on fake four is called chandelier and so i was running with the name factor forever and then once the internet started going you know the way the way it's going i you couldn't google me you couldn't write like factor so i had to yeah. get a second name and so my first album was called chandelier like the one that really i don't know got out there for me uh -huh. solo not not like with a wall or anybody yeah the game you reckon it was, was like a compilation game. everybody was on it the splash so then the i band. decided to so that's how i met chesky is i asked him to do a song for that album and basically he was like, I'm going to knock this song out. I'm a fan. And I was a fan of his. We had mutual friends, but we kind of were only friends on the internet. Like, I don't know if it was MySpace or how the hell we even really were communicating. Maybe just email. Mm. But uh, so he knocked out the song Pray. It's called Pray, the first song me and Chesky ever did. And uh, I sent him the record. I was like, check it out. And he was telling me he was starting a label called Fake Four with his friends and family. He wasn't necessarily looking for new artists. And I was like, oh, like, no problem. I have my own label, Side Road. This is coming out on Side Road, no big deal. Um, I just want you to hear it. Like, at that time, you know, you're trading tapes. It, was, it wasn't so easy to get new things. 
So he was pumped to uh, to check it out. And I remember later that night, I sent it to him in like two to like four hours later, he hit me up. He's like, yo, this is going to be the second release on our label. And I was like, whoa, I, I'm completely down. That sounds amazing. Because I had so much respect for him. And uh, he's just always been such a like amazing musician you know and a sure. uh, forward thinker that I, I i really respect the the things that he has done and will do you know he he's he's a he's on a forward trajectory right now that's amazing and uh and it was weird because he was like what do you think about this this instrumental that you have that's all like weird and off time and i was like I don't know. Like, I think it's just a dope instrumental, but like maybe if like Mike and nine or something wrapped on it, I don't really know a lot of people that could like flow on this. Yeah. He's like, I just did a song with Mike and I, I have his phone number. <laughs> I'm going to hit him up right now. Wow. And give him your so phone dope. number. That's awesome. and I was like, what? So then dude, cold call with Mike and nine in 2007, yeah. like my idol basically. It's like, you know, what's up you know when we start chatting he's like send the beat it was like a little interlude so i sent him the beat he's like you gotta extend this man like, <laughs> and i was like well okay this is all going up really fast and then he hit me up and i remember this he was like you don't want to add any like 808s or anything like that and i was like well i don't know like the integrity of the song was kind of like folky and like kind of weird and he's like all right all right then he called me back like 10 minutes later. He's like, I got the flow. He's like, make the <laughs> thing like three minutes long. I was like, okay. So I did it, made it three minutes long. And then he sent me back Smokey. Sick. Like, I don't know if you guys know that track. Yeah, I yeah. And I if you don't, it, it's like to this day, I feel like one of the, one of the greatest things, like the, the way he just flowed on that. And I remember him saying on the phone being like, I don't know what's going on with this song, but this could lead to, you know, uh, future working together, a lifelong friendship. And like, I was yeah. like, okay, like, I don't know, this is crazy. But since that song, I mean, me and Mike have been GPs, like. Over 10 geez, years, well over 10 years. Dope. Like, you know, 13, I love that guy. All over a random call out of nowhere. That's out of, hey, I know, I just did a song. Boom. That's fucking awesome. Right Jeski just did a song with him, you know what I mean? And I don't know, yeah. somehow we just clicked. Like, like we've been to, to be. Japan together. Like, we've been all over America. He's been to Canada. You know, Micah was reading uh, children's stories to my to my son, there you know? You like, so dope. Me and him are on, like, uh, uh, that kind of level. And uh, Wow. I'm very and I'm very proud of our catalog and he has the title track on my new album that's the first song on my new album that comes out right away or March 28th which is on my 40th 40th birthday, birthday from there what I go. hear yes excited yeah, to so, hear that and, we're looking forward to that and one and you'll notice all these songs that me and Micah if you start like looking at them they have a lot of these weird um I don't even know if they're coincidences but you know a lot of things focus on time a lot of uh so my album's called Time Invested. Yeah. We put our album out, 1969, on his 40th birthday. Wow. And then my album, he has the title track for my 40th birthday. I mean, it's, you know, it might yeah. be too much. That's to the universe. Perfect that's the universe yeah. just yeah. aligning yeah. right there. Well, that's, and that's like <laughs> a perfect little hip hop story with oh, you guys man. meeting and creating a friendship and then creating a catalog that's going to last a lot of, you know, Lifetime. lifetimes more than just a lifetime lifetime and lifetimes you know tell tell your kids Thank as kids you. you know that's that's amazing thing to do you were talking about working with chesky uh what was it like working with somebody like chesky who has such a uh certain ear for what he wants his music to sound like and you've worked with him a ton and now being a part of fake four and stuff like that and you've gotten used to this but what's it like working with somebody that has that type of ear for music and knows exactly what he wants to sound with is it easier to work with someone because he's giving you more uh feedback and influence or is it hard to work crazy, with them yeah. because you're, you're just like let me do my thing let me let me give you a beat real quick and when you are working with them what does that process actually look like is he coming out to saskatoon what's that what's that process looking like because he, he's shouting out the city pretty often in some tracks so you know yeah he's family he's family at this point but you know what what i will say about me and chesky 
one thing that nobody nobody else in the world i don't think anyone else in the world has as similar taste in certain music especially our appetite for west coast underground things we're like boom we're like uh we're like siamese twins on what we like wow. off which album that's hard it's like boom this album that song this thing that oh and then but then you flip it it's like joanna newsom boom this you know I don't know. We have a lot of we have a lot of similarities. I know like he has a whole nother world. Like he's so extra extra with the music. He knows, mm -hmm. you know, he can go into his metal, he can go into his punk, he can go into he any genre with anybody, but uh he's also good at knowing what people are good at. So he's not asking me to do something I can't do mm -hmm. or don't want to do. Mm -hmm. And uh you know, I show him a lot of beats. That's full he, trust. He, That's dope. He, he flexes on a lot of them, and some of the, you know, most of them work if he's gonna drop on them. But if they don't, we're both like, next right away. It's yeah, like yeah. no big deal. Got thick skin at this point. I don't care if someone's like, no, I'm not feeling this beat. I'm like, hey, well, here's another one. Yeah. Or like, let's. That's my new sick. favorite thing is is like, doing something like this in a Zoom call. Boom! I'll just start making a beat, and if it, if like you guys are MCs, I'll just like make it. Okay, we got the melody, we got the drums. I'm like, check your email in an hour. You better be writing those rhymes because we're gonna like <laughs> pretend we're doing this on the spot, even though it's the yeah. pandemic. Yeah, and that's a that's the cool thing about technology, I guess, For right? Sure. You yeah. can have a full studio session in total different parts of the world, and yeah. uh, and the pandemic has kind of opened that door a little bit. What are you mixing up with that elixir there, my man? Oh, we just some vodka, <laughs> a splash of Red Bull, and a little bit of this sparkling uh, black cherry sparkling water. I'm trying to keep it healthy. Like it. I'm trying I to like keep it healthy. It. I'm drinking you know, the clears. You know, these, these are the things. These are the things. I would love to be in the studio, but yeah, technology is beautiful. But oh man, some of the vibes. So that's why we have me and Chesky haven't finished the third album. He needs to be at the house. We need to do the thing. Uh, um, yeah. I think when we talked to Chesky, he did mention that that he really, he, this is cool to be able to do this, but he really likes to be on spot with his producers and um in in the in the same studio which making I love. music. Yeah, which is vibe. There's, there's a different type of taste. That's, that's real yeah. love for the hip hop game right there, you know. Oh, and it and it flows out. You know, there's those some songs you make. It takes like. I don't know. There's something about being in the moment with that energy. Yeah, it's and, energy. Uh, and that's what I, I mean, that's what I live for. That's really, that's what I want. And I have a comfortable studio space. Uh, you know, I, I have a house. I got the basement. Basically, there's this room we're chatting in right now. Right across the hall is the studio. There's a pull-out bed right there and a bathroom over there. That's, that's all in your basement? Like, that's all you need for the artists. Damn. And they, 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 they chill out. So they dope. sleep up there. And, uh, and yeah. You know, we got the we got the room upstairs. We got the kitchen. I like cooking. I like doing my thing. So you know, it's comfortable. It's not. I don't do it with the like. Like I don't. I don't invite a lot of people over. But the G's, you know, we come over. We make the records, and yeah. I'm not really yeah. about trying to like ladder climb or do stuff like that. I'm not. I don't really care about that. I'm just. I'm thankful for being able to. You know, continue working with. I mean, after after you that I like, and they become our friends, you know. Yeah. After Fuck you've created a, created a friendship and a catalog with Mike and Nine, how much further up the ladder can you climb? <laughs> right? you know what I mean, well, you're yeah, already so we're there. on the same wavelength. Then. You're already there. Yeah. I'm thinking you're already on top, man. There ain't nowhere else to go. So just enjoy the ride while you're there. Definitely enjoy that ride. And let's talk a little bit about time invested too. Coming out once again on your 40th birthday, March 28th. All right, this is you can buy this in a in a party bundle with a 500 piece jigsaw puzzle, bro. A tote Whoa, bag, like Jesus. this is a hard ass. Merch game is strong. I, I, this is a special album coming out. I know this means a lot to you. A lot of features that were uh, on your the first time invested, correct? 20 years ago, you know, Living yeah. Legends, Mike and Nine. Um, a wall one, you know, um, talk a little bit about that. How long has this album been in the making and what's it been like making this one? So it's been about two years in the making. Uh, I did an instrumental project. So when the, so after I got home and then the pandemic hit, we had this, there was a water main break or something on our street. I read a little bit about that. got flooded. So then 
I mean, it was, that was the worst. And then, you know, went through all the insurance and all this stuff and ended up getting some new equipment. Mm -hmm. So that was like pandemic that, and then I don't know, that was maybe the dark part of the pandemic for me. I was maybe, you know, getting it in a bit and so being in pissed. the basement and you could, at that time it was like lockdown in my city. You couldn't do anything. So I just was like trying to figure out my equipment while like, whatever so i put out this record east lake which i love it i don't think i'm ever going to make anything like it but it was like a record that i did absolutely everything yeah on the whole thing yeah. and it helped me really find my sound and decide how i wanted to sound and have my own sound moving mm -hmm. forward that was still like kept the integrity of my catalog but continue moving forward so I did that. And I mean, it's been about two years I was working on that record, you know, mm -hmm. me and Mike Eagle the song came out today. I mean, we had been kind of going back and forth with some beats, figuring out some things. A lot of things happen with him. He's always doing these amazing things. Like we, we did the song for this, you know, um, me and Chesky were working on the third album we decided not to take a song from that. We decided to do something new. Then we got a wall and Greg on it. Then we got evil on one. Like it was just interesting things. It was reconnecting with a lot of friends and uh, I'm really proud of it. I think it actually in my catalog, I mean, you know, you always say that about your new album, but I think it might be the most definitive record that I've made and probably yeah. my best, probably my best start to end album. I really do believe that. Um, I mean, it was awesome. Like for instance, me and Sunspot haven't talked to him much. We ended up doing, we ended up having like a, a chat on, I don't know, Instagram video or yeah. maybe like I message. I don't know. But like we hadn't chatted in a while. And then all of a sudden it was like, I'm making a beat. We're all of a sudden doing a song. <laughs> I go to LA, we did the video for the song and it's like so hype. And then you think back, I'm like, I've known this guy for 20 years. We were, we recorded 20 years ago. That's like, that's insane. insane. So I'm just thankful to be able to have like kept these relationships and you know, just, you know, continue growing. And I think like all, like a lot of the newer stuff is the best stuff we've made. So it's great. Definitely, it's definitely great. looking forward to it. Dope. The uh, track with Eli patient, super dope, man. Um, I Dang. love Eli. Eli is one of my favorite, uh, mm -hmm. hip hop artists or favorite rappers. I should say one of my favorite, rap. he's one of my favorite writers. We were writers, just talking, rappers. we were just talking earlier about, we were listening to a Sage Francis song before you came on and, uh, Sage, someone that you've worked with, yeah. and I was I was telling them as I've gotten older, I've I've admired his writing more and more, and you could see that journalism in him and how he writes, and he's so meticulous about his writing. And Eli is another someone from from the West Coast that is, I mean, every word is placed perfectly when Eli writes, and it's it's something that no one else could do. The mouthfuls that he spits out, but it's also like every word is put in its spot perfectly. The writing is really well, something that you can only admire after you hear it a few times i think for sure unreal they're yeah. unreal those are those those guys are both at the top of their game and you know it, eli really was a personal favorite of mine mm -hmm. in the in the early living legends days mm -hmm. and 20 years ago when i first met kirby dominant when i first met psc when i first met sunspot it was because i had a record store and we were selling tons of Living Legend stuff. And I and I sent them, I, I think PSC was doing the thing. I was like, he was doing the distribution and I was ordering stuff for the store off him. And I was like, look, we're having like a big like opening party. Will you guys like come perform? Yeah. So then Damn. we worked it all out. We flew him to Saskatoon. It was this like, awesome. I was like a kid, like a little kid, like not little kid, but I was young and yeah. uh, we ended up like I still live with my parents. They came, they came down to my basement in my house with my like little setup, and they and huh. you know, That's they so spit hard. the verse. They spit the verse. It was Eli and PSC that came first, and they they spit the verses on the track. Damn. And then Eli, after he spit the verse, he got sick and flew home. He didn't oh, even shit. do the show. Oh, <laughs> so like man. I met him for such a little time. Yeah. So it was. 
you know, it was very interesting. He did the 16 bar verse on time invested. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then I reconnected with him 20 years later because this guy, uh, owns a record label that does small, small pressings. Ooh, that's heavy Mm -hmm. and audio recon. And they were pressing up my record as well as an old Eli record. And they were like, man, you guys got to work together again. And I was like, set it up. So like, then me and him started chatting. It was like, That's everything awesome. just kind of organically happened on this album. So dope. And I didn't like say no to anything. I was like, I was, you know, I, I was, I was excited to do it. And then, so, you know, Eli, I mean, yeah. he did two songs yeah. on the album and he absolutely crushed. He absolutely crushed. For sure. I feel like he's always crushing everything he does. He's, always, you know, he's really <laughs> sculpted true. his game. Yeah. Um, you know, at this that's point, that's so true. Life, he's never know? not crushed. Yeah. So you're no, right. He's never not. That's one uh, living legend that stands out in our mind. They're all though, yeah, for sure. But Eli, for sure, stands always crushing out. it, dude. Um, Isosceles. I believe they were out of Saskatoon uh, too originally, and they were featured on your first album, Time Invested One. What was your relationship with Isosceles? Because that's a group that we loved. And, uh, you know, I, I can't remember the name of that first album they came out with, but we loved that first album. And it was kind of hard. Music. It was called Face the Music. Face, Face the Music. Yeah. And it was kind of hard to find them after that, you know. Yeah. What was your relationship with them? And talk a little bit about Isosceles. I know Kevin and Kelly pretty well. Um, let me see here. Okay. <laughs> So Kevin and Kelly were the guys who were distributing and and they like made a lot of the West Coast stuff available to Saskatoon people because they were in a group called Conscious Pilots, which was like Mocha only was in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeff wow. Speck, he, he's, uh, he used to be known as Intellect back then. Um... And yeah, I mean, they made that album. Face the Music is a classic record, and that's from here, you know? So I I knew them because one of my buddies on my high school basketball team lent them a tape player that had high-speed dubbing and used to dub their tapes to wow. sell Face the Music. <laughs> so he would bring his so tape crazy. player over to their apartment and dub tapes with them, and that's how I met them. Wow. That's pretty fucking. Dope. I was just looking over here because I have the face of the music cassette. Let me, yeah. Let me see if I can find it for one second, or I don't even know if that matters. But uh, the connections. I have the that, original crazy, like cassette, first though. face the music cassette. Isn't that face the music with the sun in your eyes and look forward to what tomorrow yeah, never yeah. mind would arise. Yep. That's my shit. That's my shit. I love that record, and it holds up to this day. For sure. Yeah. It definitely holds up. Definitely holds up, day. for sure. The connections That's that you... how I met Mocha Only is through those guys. If it wasn't for those yeah, that, guys, that I wouldn't one know Mocha Only. That's what I was just going to say. The, like, yeah, those have... little connections that you make along the way that you, the, at the moment, don't seem... They seem insignificant, and then they just are these big moments for... I mean, maybe not for you, but us looking at it from an outside view, huge moments in hip hop that sure. created, that blossomed and created tons of music. Like I guess it's, I mean, looking at it, it's like that butterfly effect thing, you know, yeah. these moments that you that could have, you could have not done, but it ended up, you did meet these people and it created something amazing. And that verse on that song sounds so effortlessly. I'm about to rap. I'm on the phone right now. I'm on yeah, the yeah, phone. Yeah, right? yeah, and then he's like, yeah, yeah. I'm about to hang up right now. And yeah. Like, yeah, dude. It's like so fucking dope, yeah. dude. And it just sounds Hell so yeah. effortlessly. Oak is one of the funniest guys there is. I mean, that guy is hilarious. You know, you could just tell his personality came through on that track. That was like him being like Mocha. Yeah. yeah. Dude, that's like when I hear that, when I listen to that album, I play it back sometimes and I... And I'll get like really baked in here, you know, <laughs> not just like normal listening to it, but like really like baked. Really and high. it's like, yeah, you're like just you and that fucking album. And th- sometimes I hear stuff that see, I you hear verses it. or you hear pieces of verses that you don't always hear. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you just go in more in depth with it. It's just it's a great fucking album. And, and like you said, it I don't think it's aged at all. And if it has aged, it aged well. Like a fine whiskey. It, it's, it's like a fine wine right there, man. Yeah. Look, will that. you find it? Yeah, there mocha, it is. Though, oh, every that's mocha day only. Have you heard that? Oh yeah, that's dope. That's, you have the actual old tapes. school right that's there. Classic. Dope. And what I, I like that you oh, have I the cassette it. tape. I fucking found it. That goes it's hard. Going hard. 
I went hard for you guys right there. Hell yeah, that's, we appreciate like that, you. Bro. The original. Yep, Dang. that's oh. it. Please tape. Yeah, that's so. Uh, oh wow. And I'll show you how original it is. Let's see it. Handwriting on the tape. That's oh so wow, that's that is pop fucking history dope, right there. dude. That's history. Yeah. And that's it's sad that a lot of people don't know how much history that I mean that's, that's part a lot that's part of that's crazy like the the fundamentals of when you're coming up and listening yeah, to music it was of one of those tapes and one of the fucking sounds that you you heard first and you're like okay this is this is underground hip hop we always yeah. try to figure that out on this show we're always talking about what is like back in the day it was the so itch. easy to know what What's underground hip hop is scratch. and what is underground hip hop nowadays it's just so hard to fucking point it out but when you uh when yeah. you listen to that song or that that album yeah. in general it, it is underground hip hop can you at can, its finest. can you make underground hip hop still like as a new guy can you say i'm today <laughs> i'm me. underground hip hop i'm still doing it no i mean i mean like say i was like a <laughs> like right now i say i'm born 2003 mm. can i say I'm they're gonna make youngsters. underground hip hop, and I'm just gonna just start as it. Like, I mean, I don't even know if that's possible anymore. I think there's still youngsters that are coming up that are still listening, especially since, um, you know, the retro is always the new fad. Yeah. So I think that people yeah. are listening to old hip hop music, and but eventually they're gonna come around, what, and there's gonna be some cats that are gonna be the, super underground. What I'm saying is, I don't think there's an underground anymore in sense, because no matter yeah. if you put it out, people are gonna find it quick. It's just different. It's just a different time, so it's not underground anymore. It'd be I like adapt. Exactly. Yeah. It, what would they? What would That's they even what call that? You gotta adapt you know? for sure. Definitely got to. Yo, you know, you know the main guy Kevin. He moved to Japan. Mm. And That's what you're saying. I, yeah. When we were on tour in Japan. I, I linked up with them. I have that. I saw Sleeves 12 inch. They, they did some stuff after this. Yes. Yeah, so I found, I recently found a band camp. I went on the Isosceles journey recently and I, I stumbled upon this band camp from Japan and uh, had a few tracks from the, you know. It's wild. Agape I from uh, yeah. Isosceles. Yeah, you know? Agape. That's what he yes. goes by now. Yes, Agape. So that's, that's a shit that I had never heard though until just the other day, and I'm so excited because I'm going to introduce uh, these guys okay. to that. They've never heard that, so uh, you know. Yeah, it's exciting. That's just the music journey that you've been on from a, a person looking from the outside looking in. It's amazing, and we uh, we appreciate you very much for coming and talking to us on your Friday night. We really appreciate Fuck that. Yeah, Most hey, definitely. well, thanks for having me, guys. Hell yeah! I, I mean, you're bringing up a lot of memories I haven't thought about in a while, so that's nice too. That's great, know? man. Don't, we love hip hop. We that's kind of what music. we, and that's what we do on this podcast is we just sit around and talk about. About old music that like we always play songs and we're like this song is a time machine and it yeah. kind of takes you back and puts you in yes. this in this space songs in the space that you were in when you first forever. heard that song you yeah. know and so uh we like talking about old memories and keeping it old school for some reason on this podcast that's kind of what we do but we appreciate you coming and talking about right. your new music and we look forward to hearing new music from you and uh look hearing the new album march 28th march i'm 20th. invested too yeah, march 28th you know i i got a couple more singles coming coming out uh and i got that sunspot video as well yes sir i'm speaking speaking of him and then some of the Canadian cats, you know, like I don't know how much you guys know about K the Aquanaut or Def Three. Yep, Those I know about K the like Aquanaut. OGs out here, and they're, and they're they're on the they're on the level. They're amazing artists, you know, mm. from out here, and and it all stems from that same stuff. You know, we all grew up on the same stuff, so it's uh, it's in the wheelhouse. Oh man, I just I'm thinking about I'm thinking about Japan now. When we're That's out awesome, time. man. Once yeah, again, I just, how long were you guys in Japan? Did yeah. you guys do a full tour over there? Me, Mike, me, Micah, and Kirby Dominant as Paranoid Castle did a did a tour out there, and we wild out. Shout out to Kai again. He he drove he he like showed us around, and we were maniacs. How is that? Uh, yeah, How is that? I remember, Kevin? I don't know if you know. I saw sleeves like it's two identical twins and one other guy. Yeah, the yeah. twins so and then the like telepathic the triplet. Yeah, the telepathic telepathic triplet. The telepathic right. triplet. Man, you guys really do know your eyes. Hey, sleeve. man, for sure. And we do love it's part of once it's again part of that <laughs> underground history, like we were talking about. So. Uh, something that we definitely yeah 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 that's yeah those guys you know you know they really they really did bring a lot of stuff that you know everyone has something different to say but but they did have uh i mean they made that album face the music it was it was influential you know i can't i can't deny that like you said still, no still holds up still no holds bars. Up. strong i heard strong. i heard a quote uh old quote that 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 burns the brightest burns the fastest so there you go something like that right there 
It, I, I think there I just, I might have hacked that, that's, but it's somewhere around. That's the opposite of me. Like that. yeah. <laughs> there you go. I'm like that slow burn. Slow burn. But you're at the top of the ladder like we talked about, and we appreciate you coming and talking with us, Thank talking you. with Milk Rates and Microphones, spending your Friday with us. And uh, like I said, we look forward to hearing the new album. Uh, yes, happy sir. early Cheers birthday. You, happy Cheers early 40th, you. man. Well, that's, a, that's, that's a milestone. This was, this was very enjoyable. Hey, I appreciate it. And hopefully we can do it again in the future, maybe after the album. Um Maybe even yeah, catch up to you. Let's do an album recap, and and you can uh, and you can you know think about some more of those old school stories, and I'll and I'll I'll, I'll go off the dome and tell you what I can remember. Dude, we would so love it because I've enjoyed hearing all these stories, and um, it's it's crazy to sit here and listen to you talk about it's these like stories box. that happened to you, but they're <laughs> open them up. I mean, yes, sir. Hanging out with Eli and Sage Francis and Chesky, and these are people that true we true hip hop exactly. Yeah. So it's been great. Thank you so much. We've really enjoyed this. Much love, homies. Thank Much you. Love. Thank Enjoy you, the rest Much of your night. Sure. And uh, thank you again for joining Milk Crates and Microphones. Cheers to you, Factor Chandelier. Peace. 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 Peace.